Good morning, it's John Burford with Chart of the Week for Monday the 15th of November and I'm covering uh, the Far East in the guise of uh, China. Now China share, Chinese shares have been uh, totally out of favor in the last few weeks and months. Um, all the news pretty much has been negative from the uh, crackdown on the tech sector and the internet to the crash or mini crash should I say in part of the property sector with Evergrande being the headline uh, culprit here but with sentiment at a very low ebb uh, I am making a contrarian play here for a resumption of the uptrend in Chinese shares. Now this is the A50 which is the index of the 50 of the largest cap shares. It's the equivalent of the of the Dow and uh, right away I take it back now by the way to the uh, 2015 area and you can see an absolutely magnificent standout uh, line, trend line, joining the three major highs. That is quite unusual. That There's a highly accurate touch points on this line and the rule is once you find an accurate, uh, accurate uh, trend line which separates uh, support from resistance, this is all resistance of course, um, and a push through, then you extend the line and that is where you normally find support. That is a high probability trade. And uh, uh, from the, uh, the surge up into a new all-time high back in February, we have an A, B, C, a very clear three-wave um, uh, correction. And it is a correction because it's in three waves. Now, of course, if the market drops way down into here, it's no longer three waves, of course. Uh, but as of now, we have to go with what we've got and it's three waves down and it's come back to touch this line here and I believe uh, it is ready and poised to advance quite strongly I believe. Now if that happens uh, many of the hedge funds who are very short this market will be forced to cover and we will get what we call a short squeeze and that will send shares even higher. So I am looking uh, at a low risk, high probability trade here uh, by the dip and long China. Now let me resume coverage of uh, FTSE, uh, the FTSE 100. Um, I have been on the bearish tack, uh, believing that this area here, which is the 7200 uh, line was my line in the sand. You see how many times it's got knocked back. Every time it's hit it, it's got knocked back. But in the last uh, few days, it's actually pushed well above this line here. So I have to change my stance. I am no longer bearish. I am in fact neutral. Um, I am not sure how much higher it can go. It is possible that we might find uh, it uh, moving down into this area here to test it again. Now that I would say would be a very good uh, a buy uh, area because this is solid, solid resistance to here. I assume this is now solid support. So we have to go on that basis. So that would be the um, uh, my uh, near-term roadmap for the FTSE. Now if it actually continues going up and up and up <laughs> the, um, all bets are off and uh, I will be forced to become bullish again. Um, I am actually bullish on several UK based shares um, but the index itself has been a bit of a, um, a, a, um, a difficulty for me but I'm willing to change my mind so long as the evidence changes. Now of course it's got a long way to go to make an all-time high. This is the 7900 top in 2018, three years ago, um, and um, 500, five, um, 500 points from here, mm, I don't know. 
um, it's a pretty tall ask. And let me go over Tesla. I know it's um, a, uh, a very popular share to trade. This is the uh, chart I showed uh, a few uh, a couple of weeks ago. I think it was. This is when it was zooming up uh, towards the uh, 1200 region. It actually made it uh, just above 1200. And that was the point at which I recommended taking profits. Uh, let, let's check on the, um, the updated chart. Okay, here's the daily chart. It made a high of 1240 odd dollars a share. And this was the area that I recommended taking profits. And the news emerged that uh, Mr. Musk um, was obligated to sell 10% of his holdings. Um, and whether that's true or not, I really don't know. But that certainly induced a lot of selling. And we had what we call a, a gap um, the next morning which has never been filled. Um, so it has the potential, and only the potential so far, of being what we call a breakaway gap. This occurs when uh, we've had a very strong rally, um, and then the, the day after the top is, is made, uh, a big uh, gap has opened up, and it never gets filled, at least not for a very long time. So we call those breakaway gaps. You see, there are many types of gaps. This is just one. Uh, it's come down to the uh, 34, um, the uh, sorry, 38% Fibonacci ratio round about here. It tried to bounce. It's been knocked back. I would say um, odds are pretty good. We should see it back down to here around the uh, 950, which is around the 50% Fibonacci. And uh, on a following wind, we could see it down here to the 62% level which is around the $875 region. Um, I would be looking at an ABC though. Um, uh, an A, that's a, probably a B. This could well be the final C wave as, as it makes it down to these targets here. But I would need to, uh, to take a look at the shorter term charts to uh, distinguish that. In any case, um, uh, that was a pretty good call, taking profits round about the high.